everyone, Lickety here, and I have my newest camp to share with you. This is going to be a tour, as there isn't much building involved in this, as my budget is mostly decoration, but I'll show you how I made a few things. Alright, let's go check it out! I chose this location right here because there is a waterfall. It is right nearby the crashed plane. I've been dying to build over here for a while. This is the build I had in mind as soon as the greenhouse dump without a foundation was available. And it took me a little while to figure out how to do it, which I'll show you later. I wanted to go for a very overgrown hidden garden, nice and lush, with just a little bit of weird thrown in. Gotta have a nice grand entrance. In the center, I have my witch's brew inside of the bathtub over here. I was going for the look of it having the faucet pour straight into the bathtub. <laughs> it's the little things. These columns are one of the atomic shop purchases that I definitely do not regret. I used the Foshnot branch garlands quite liberally because I was trying to get that really lush overgrown look. And threw a few lights up there for nighttime. I had to stack these saves to get my smoke machine at the right level. And here we come across towards the waterfall. I didn't really do a whole lot with the waterfall because it's beautiful on its own. I did add a little bench here so you can enjoy the view. And I have a sleeping bag underneath the cove over there, which I'll show you later. Ah, so peaceful. The way the light filters in through the glass dome is just beautiful. To our left, we have a little bit of topiary. A big old death claw. He helps me scare off all the rad toes that pop by. I named him Fred. And tucked away back here, it's where I keep my shower for all you filthy, filthy animals out there. You know who you are. Okay, let's head back towards the center and I'll show you the rest of the build. You do have to hop up these rocks to get to this exit. Oh, hey kitty. And this is a pretty open build. My seating and eating area is over here with a little bit of a barbecue. It is a little bit more open than I prefer, but my budget's maxed out. And then we have the upper garden area. Just a nice feature to look at while you're having a nuke and you're hanging out. I will show you later in the video of how I made those columns. It does look a little clustered, but I think it looks good. It looks crowded in a good way. I do like using the stone benches as sort of makeshift dividers. They're really good for showing separation, especially when you're having a more open build. All right, let's check out the little shack that we have. The only closed in area has my vendors. I use that vendor stacking trick that I showed in my haunted house video in order to fit them all in one small space. Got a couple things here if you need it. I have absolutely nothing in here right now because I just finished making my build. Of course, a wind chime, anything with a little ambient sound. And just a couple things up for display. Nothing much. Head on down into the left, we have our power supply. The overhanging roof was bothering me, so I added these Foshnot poles in just so it looked supported. And on this slightly lower deck area, we have all of our crafting amenities.
There is a little stairwell here that'll take you down to the water. And here's the waterfall again. Vault Boy's just taking a little shower. Sometimes I have a little trouble getting to where my sleeping bag is. It's easier if I fall into the hole straight from the waterfall. And I just got a few stuffies to keep me company. The nighttime view is definitely my favorite. I really love all the ambient bits of lighting that I have. And I did add a few fireflies in here because they give off a little bit of a glow too. The lighting on a build is actually pretty important to me. Although I know I could do a better job if I had a little bit more budget. What would make this just that much better is if the nights actually got really dark in here and we could see those stars. But we do with what we can. And the fireflies light the way to the next area. Personally, when it comes to lighting, I prefer anything that isn't powered by electricity. So any of the candles, the lanterns, the lamps, they just look so much better to me. And of course, we got a little bit of moonlight beaming through. Here is the upper garden again. I think I might take a picture of this shot right here. That looks really pretty. Sometimes when I just need just a little bit of extra light in an area, I make sure to utilize my camp pop-up thingy, whatever that thing's called. And out in the workshop area, we just have the pumpkins and twinkling lights and these lamps. There seems plenty. And back down the waterfall, I'll show you the right way to get into the sleeping cove. And pop up once and you're good. I thought that lanterns on the waterfall area was a little bit more realistic than candles because those would probably get too wet. Ah, breathtaking. Okay, let me show you a little bit of the building. In order to get the greenhouse to float, I did try one method before, I'll link that down below, but it was pointed out to me that there's a much easier way to do it. You start with one foundation and a set of stairs, and then you're going to make a three by three square of flooring. Yes, it's bothering me that those are not facing the right way too, but we're just gonna take it down in a little bit anyway, so it's okay. And now we just need to pull out our greenhouse dome without a foundation and just get it to the right place that we want it to be. Once you have it set up here and you take everything down, you're not going to be able to adjust it. Yeah, that'll work. And then you just take all of the extra bits down. And there we have our floating greenhouse dome. Now, as for the columns, they can be a little bit tricky. If you place just one down, the bench that you want to put on top for the railing doesn't really work out that well. It likes to have more than one to kind of register that it's sitting on top of something. So I usually just put three down and I space them out. So... And at that point, the bench will actually be able to register that it's going to be sitting on top of a surface. At least if you set it down once, you'll be able to adjust it a little bit afterwards, including the side pillars. The bench itself is attached to the middle pillar, not the other two pieces. You can actually blueprint the centerpiece and the bench, but I find when I've tried to place it again, it just is not valid and it doesn't really want to work for me. 
So what I do instead is I just blueprinted the entire trio. Although if you try to move it again, it'll just move the centerpiece. And you can stack the columns on top of these other columns and they'll clip through the bench, which is really cool. I really like the effect. Just add this little bench up top and it's good. I'm going to go ahead and extend this out into a half circle. Let me show you how you do it. You can't have that upper column on there in order to adjust this in there. It takes a little bit of maneuvering, but you can get the ends of the benches to touch so that you can continue the row. And let's just speed through this real quick so I can show you the finished product. Nice. I'm going to go ahead and add a row up on top again. Now, as long as you just place them somewhere where they're in the green, you can adjust them a little bit better afterwards, get them right to where they need to be, because right now they definitely don't line up. Ah, yes, that's much better. It's not a perfect curve. I could do with a little bit of adjusting here and there, but I think it's pretty good. You can blueprint this too, and it works just great. I'm really excited to see what ways you might use this in your camps, if this is something you might want to use. Be sure to share it. I like to check out the Fallout 76 settlement subreddit often, so tag me if you share it there so I can check it out. The link is in the description. So what do you think? Do you like this quirky, weird, lush garden build? Let me know in the comments. And also, if you have any questions about it, be sure to let me know too. And as always, I'm Wiggy. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!